today in this very special episode of me. It's not going to be just me. It's going to be me and my friend Josh. Now you may have heard of Josh because he has a little YouTube channel called Ham Radio Crash Course, where he enjoys teaching ham radio things to those people interested in ham radio things. So today, Josh is going to teach me, and by extension, you, how to fox hunt a GMRS repeater jammer. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with those terms, a repeater jammer is basically a dickhead with no life that tries to make up for the attention that apparently his mother never gave him by making a repeater unusable for everyone else. And they do this usually just by pushing the push to talk button on their radio connected to a repeater whenever somebody else tries to talk, thereby causing interference, or by simply talking nonstop when other people are trying to talk and use the repeater, rendering the repeater useless or at least very frustrating to use. And the term fox hunt means to track down, to locate the jammer and teach him a lesson, which Josh is going to teach me how to do. So Josh from Ham Radio Crash Course came over to the Not a Rubicon Network headquarters. We packed his equipment into my car, and this is what happened. So Josh. Yes, sir. We have a little bit of a jammer problem Ooh. on my GMRS repeater. Okay. He likes to have fun. Sure. And, uh, as as very, one does. It's very irritating. Okay. So today, you are going to show me how to track him down. Okay. As the ham radio operators call it, fox hunt. Right. Yeah. Little right? direction so, finding is uh, yeah. right. what we call it too. Yeah. Right. You're going to teach me how to do it and show me how easy it is or not easy it is. And we're gonna see how long it takes to find him. So now, to be honest, I know where he is. Ah, I see. So, but it's really a test for you. Josh does not know where he is. I don't know exactly where he is. He is a friend, so he's not really a jammer. He's playing the part of a jammer okay. for our camera purposes. He's not gonna be driving around the city while we're trying no, to find him, right? No. Okay, because that's much harder. Right, so he will be in a, stand, in a stationary okay. location. Now, he's on a repeater. Mm -hmm. which makes it more difficult. Josh, explain to us why using tracking on a repeater is more confusing. Right, so repeaters, to be a repeater, they both simultaneously receive and transmit at the same time. And to do that, they have to have an offset frequency. That offset frequency is the repeater input. So to properly direction find someone, we don't just use the repeater output because we'd be direction finding the repeater, which is not helpful. So we need to be direction finding on the repeater input. And so what equipment do we need to do this? There, there's lots of different equipment you can use, but uh, you can start out, one, making sure you can hear them on your HT. That's the first thing. And then using some kind of directional antenna is what we're going to start out with. We want to uh, make it directional, meaning we're going to kind of use it to point around and wherever the highest intensity spot is, that's likely the direction that that jammer's at. So that's what we're going to be using the, the gain, if you will, and the side rejection of the directional antenna to use it almost like a spotlight. So how do we get started? We pop the trunk and build an antenna. This is a dual band VHF UHF antenna. For ham radio, we we could use this for the 2 meter 70 centimeter band, but for GMRS, we only need the 70 centimeter portion which is nice because this antenna provides more gain on 70 centimeters because we have more elements at our disposal. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here is, we're assembling the boom. All right, so here is our antenna. That's all we need to, to do this right now. Yeah, fades out. Yeah, so I'm fairly confident that he's that away at this point. So what the what best thing to do from my point of view is make a, a note on a map that we think we know where the signal's coming from, we're, we're at this location, right? And we kind of give it a pie slice of that away, right? Then go west, because we, we think it's it's northwest of us. Go west and then take another shot and see if you can pie slice it out. And then we'll progressively get closer and closer. And at some point, this is gonna be 
too much intensity, too much gain, that we're basically going to be right on top of them, so we're going to have to change to another one. Yeah, it's that. This is a band scope. I'm right here. A little bit of intensity right there. And if I swing over here, it's gone. Swing back. There it is. So now what do we need to do? So you think it's that direction? Well, I think we take a, a mark. So we'll, we'll go back to the car, take a mark, and then we head, keep going west uh, and see if we can pass it or get north or whatever of it so we can start honing in on it. All right, so I feel like we're getting closer. There was track three. We're going southwest. This is the fourth pin. So we're slowly making our way. We started over here. We're making our way down. And the signals just keep drawing us towards Pomona. So that's where we're, that's where we're heading to right now. So Josh, this has taken quite a while. We've been out for I don't know, an hour or two. Yeah, close to two hours. And we're lucky because our jammer loves to talk crap. Has, has a decent amount of power too. Right. Right. So I could see how this could take a long time um, unless if, you had people helping you. Yeah. So if we each were doing this on our own and we started at different sides of the city and we were also right. coordinating on different frequencies. Coming from opposite directions. Lots of test points, right? The other way to get a lot of test points really quickly like we were talking about is if everybody on the repeater started listening on the input when the person's talking and then said, hey, I can hear them or not hear them in my location. And if you had them on a map, you'd know pretty fast where the person is and isn't being heard. If they aren't being heard, you can omit all those places and you can get your kind of field of where you're going to go after and look for. You can hone that down considerably. Putting the net out. We're, we're catching them in the net. We're tightening the noose. And that's it. <laughs> I think he's right here. High slice kind of like that, I'm guessing. Look at the power intensity. No way, no how. No way, no how. Never mind. Right there. Never, ever, ever. So we, we overshot, it looks like. We took a reading uh, northeast of here. We've come southwest. Overshot. It looks like now we're facing back northeast, north northeast. I'm a goal. Yeah, he's he's right in this space. I'm Never getting even tighter there. now. Now at some point, this is going to become overkill, and it's going to be like signal everywhere because we're in close proximity. So we'll have to switch to a loop antenna, which is also bi-directional, right? So both it, it's going to receive on both sides, um, and we may even have to go to adding attenuation to deafen the radio so that we can again get to a point where we can hear just signal speak, uh, signal peaks. Yeah, let's go right. And we know we're close. We are close. Very close. The fact that this antenna is picking it up is... It so feels like he's done this before. <laughs> yeah, he's a professional. He's drum. a professional lid. So once you come in the car, you lose the signal. Right? Not completely, but the car is full of metal, right? So yeah. it's like we're just adding difficulty. Right now, it's almost like we're we're looking for just proximity intensity right now. Directionality is a little bit out the window when we're in the car. We're just waiting. We're just looking for the signal intensity to go up. We know he's behind us. Well, now in front of us, probably. Yeah, we've looped around us a bit. Oh, yeah. It's to the right. So you want to go a little further south? Like I maybe? think we go... Because we came across this way. Back the way we came. No, I think we go back into the right. Okay, signal's way up right now. I think we go right. Okay, we lost him again. So we got to head back. Turn right. I think we're, we're, we're dancing around where he's at. So we were just here, right? Yeah, this one. Yep, signals back up. 
He's taunting me. He's taunting you. Oh yeah. We're getting closer. Oh my God, we're we're here. We're we're somewhere. Oh my gosh, we are right on top of him. I know you guys. I know all of Yeah, he's he's pegging my my power meter, so I'm gonna have to get the attenuator set up here. Uh oh, are we losing him? We're starting to lose him. Yep. Okay. It could be up this way. You can't really speed your way through this. Like it's kind of a slow process. I have a remote transmitter device where I can key up something on my computer and it keys up an actual transmitter. Yeah, it's starting to get like strong everywhere. So we are so close, his signal is everywhere that even though this is a slightly directional loop antenna, Wait, he whoa, kind whoa, of whoa, sounds. Whoa. What is that? Uh, I see an antenna. <laughs> There's a big, big, tall, looks like collinear antenna. Hopefully you can see it. This is the widest lens that I have. So let's get closer. You can see we're totally pegged. Alright, so there's the antenna that And it's solid red. Let's go by there and we can test something really interesting, okay? You know what town I live in? You ain't gonna find me. You don't got this. We're 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 so pegged we're getting like side town. Not even close. No antenna. No. Okay, so if we drive further away. Not even close. There's no antenna connected to this radio and that's how strong it is. So See? Almost immediately starts falling off. That's your that's your final indicator. So the signal was, was so strong back there. We're still it's still super strong. But he's fading in and out. Fading in and out. And then when we get back pointed over this direction and come back around, we'll be we'll be right there. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. We're here. See, cause we, that's it. It's pegging my meter. Right. So we found it. And we know <laughs> because of that antenna right there. We successfully found the lid. It's not a lid. It's in GMRS world, it's a dick Jammer. hammer. All right, so we found it. We did. And it only took a couple of hours, which About is... About two and a half hours or so. When we found him, mm -hmm. the big question is, then what? What, you find the jammer, then what? Uh, yeah. You're gonna run up to his door and uh, no. knock on No, not. Record no. the info, license plate number, no, basically anything you can get, right? Addresses, license plate numbers, from your car, in case you have to beat a hasty retreat, I guess. Right. So now why wouldn't you wanna run up to his door and give him a what for? Well, if he's crazy enough on the radio, he might be just crazy enough in person, although most people aren't, but you know, I don't want to be a statistic. Yeah. Uh, then what? You're going to report it to the FCC? Uh, you, you, so yes, you should. Uh, hypothetically though, do we think they're going to come racing in like the cavalry? No. No. The FCC does not care. Mm. Unless, now he wasn't making death threats. He was not interfering with public Threatening safety. to kill the president. Right. Uh, right. On emergency frequencies. This right. is literally, we're talking GMRS today, right? right? He's, a, he's a nuisance on the, on the band. It depends on time too. If, for instance, you had recordings of this gentleman doing this every night for six months and you collected that all and sent it to the FCC along with his location information, they might actually write a letter. They, they might. might send a mean letter, but right. in the from the time you reported it to them to the time they got around to sending the mean letter, a year, six months, a year yeah. or longer, if ever, I think the majority of time the if ever never happens. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would report it to the FCC. Statistically, nothing would happen. Worst case, he would get a, a nasty letter, which he would either abide by or not care about. What other things uh, could you I do? I like good old fashioned shaming. You know, you can send them a letter directly to the house saying, we know who you are. Technically, you know everybody who lives in that house. You know who lives in the house. If you have the, if you know how, you look up who the house owner is, who the landlord is. Look them up on Facebook. You could really shame them. 
Mm -hmm. You can find their employers. You could find all you kinds you of stuff. You record the stupid things that he's saying mm -hmm. and then use that, uh, use his own words against him. So the key is not a good idea to go running up to his door to, or trying to cut his coax or put a pin don't, in his Don't coax. pin his coax yeah. because now you've actually committed a crime. Right. That, that's a, an actual damage to property, right? You don't want to do that. Right. The Nada Rubicon does not condone committing crimes, usually. Hey, so what have we learned here today? You can do this relatively cheaply. Obviously, I was using an Aero Antenna Yagi. That's a hundred something dollar Yagi, but you can build a tape measure Yagi that'll do the exact same thing. I was using an ICOM ID52 because of the band scope, just to show you. But you don't need that. You just need a, a power readout and intensity. You know, we call it an S meter. You just need something that has that. That's all you really need. So that could be a cheap handheld. Baofeng's not going to do it, guys, unfortunately. To uh, it's him easily, I feel. You probably don't want to do Baofeng. So uh, say goodnight, Josh. All right. Good night, Josh.